Welcome to the Genius Network Show. Outsell, outmanage, outmotivate, and outnegotiate your competition with Harvey McKay. Discover the six word secret to building a high level network of indispensable contacts, the importance of integrity in business, how to unleash more creativity than you ever thought possible, and more. Harvey McKay is a multiple New York Times best selling author, and his books have sold over 10 million copies, including the legendary How to Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive. If you would like access to the full video presentation, the special resources, and the show notes for this episode, please visit GeniusNetwork.com forward slash 50. That's GeniusNetwork.com forward slash 50. Recorded live at the Genius Network annual event. Beware the naked man who offers you his shirt. What does that mean? It means money, success, fame, and another best-selling book. Yes, that's a book title as is Swim with the sharks without being eaten alive. By now, you know who your next speaker is. Who is it? Harvey McKay, McKay, exactly. So Harvey's 10 million books have outsold most other books. His national weekly syndicated newspaper columns have been outread by his millions of readers. His $100 million uh, envelope company with over 600 employees has out-enveloped his competition. As a matter of fact, almost everything Harvey does outperforms others. So it is fitting that his message for you is outsell, outmanage, outmotivate, and outnegotiate your competition. Welcome my friend and neighbor, Harvey McKay. Hey, thanks, you, guy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that sitting ovation. <laughs> SRI, Stanford Research Institute Think Tank, Palo Alto, California. They did a substantive, in-depth survey on audiences. I'd like to share the results with you, if I could, this afternoon, so I can particularly tailor my remarks to this specific audience. I'm going to hold up three symbols. You have five seconds to pick one of the three. One that should give you peace of mind. One you should be able to identify with. One should be more relaxing to the eye than the other two symbols. Usually your first choice is your right choice. Don't tell your neighbors. Here, I'll scan it here, scan it here. Okay, how many pick the triangle? Have no for later on. Thank you very much. Test scores show you unusually high intelligence. See, someone started to raise their hand now. That's like, <laughs> how many picked the square? How many picked the square? All right, unlimited creativity. Doesn't mean necessarily use it, but you have it. How many picked the circle? Raise your hands, look at your neighbors. Thank you very much. SRI, Stanford Research Institute. Test scores show your minds constantly preoccupied with booze and sex. Am I in the right room here? Is this, is this, this is, okay. All right, now I know at least what kind of audience I've got. A lot of entrepreneurial spirit. In the next 540 seconds, I'm gonna to talk to you about some ideas, concepts, philosophies, tools that can help you prepare for excellence even when you're already very successful. My definition of success, okay, having a predetermined plan, successfully carrying it out over a long period of time and having a damn good time doing it. Damn good time doing it. So idea number one, okay, dig your well before you're thirsty. My father headed the Associated Press for 35 years. Jack McKay, got to hold me age 18. Harvey, every person you meet the rest of your life goes in the Rolodex file, computer today. All right, then a little bit about him on the back of the card. Now here's the key, find a creative, find a creative way to keep in touch. And that's what I've been doing ever since I was age 18 years old. Like talk about publishing for a moment. Back in the late 80s, I have a manuscript, Swim of the Sharks, Out Being Eaten Alive, William Moore and Company, one of the biggest seven in the world at the time publishing, had three meetings with them. Now remember, a first time unknown author, which I am, okay, from the flyover state of Minnesota wants to get published. Tom Peters, In Search of Excellence, 10,000 books, unknown first time author. Ken Blanchard, 7,500 books, unknown. Okay, at the time, I got the CEO, got the president, VP National Sales. 45 minutes into the meeting, I asked for the order. I said, I'd like you to seriously consider printing 100,000 hardcover copies Swim with the Sharks. On the 37th floor, they told me to jump. VP National Sales closes his books. Thank you very much, Mr. McKay. Obviously, you're not going to get together. And he screams at me, who are you? Come in here and ask for 100,000. We never print more than 10,000. First time, unknown author. I brought in two humongous briefcases into the conference room, boardroom, then took out, put them on the table, two huge Rolodex files, 6,000 
500 names since my father got a hold of me, age 18. Started to go through the list. Here's Pillsbury, 18,000 employees. Know a little bit about them, their customers. Maybe they'll read the book, maybe they'll pass it around. Here's General Mills, 23,000 employees. Maybe they'll read the book, pass it along. Here's Honeywell, 30,000 employees. Go to the next roll of X file. Do business in five companies. There's France, Germany, Spain. All right, maybe it'll be an international bestseller. Three weeks and three meetings later, they published 100,000 hardcover copies swimming with the sharks. Did I know when I was 18 that I'd be writing a book? Do any of you know? Okay, any of you know where your contacts are going to come from? No, so we dig our well before we're thirsty. Next three, five, seven, 10, 12, 15 years, you have no idea. And it's nice to hear speakers, but trust me, as long as you live, person on your left, person on your right, person in front of you, person behind you, way more important over a period of a lifetime. Keep that antenna up without question. Now, this is Swim with the Sharks. You don't have to look at it all. You all got a copy. Please do me a favor when you get home, on the airplane, whatever. Do not read this book. <laughs> Study it, underline it, highlight it, post-it notes, rough it up. Not only my book, self-help book, but all the wonderful books that you have in the duffel bag. One more very quick aside, World War III again with my publisher. I want to be the first in the late 80s. Money back guarantee if you, like, if you don't like Swim with the Sharks. Four week fight, I prevailed. Five million copies sold. 18 people asked for their money back. Seven of them were my best friends. <laughs> Next idea, start every day with a healthy dose of vitamin C, creativity, zip, zero, none, no correlation between creativity and IQ. Every single person in this room can way more creative than you ever, ever be dreamed about without question. Creativity, no, no correlation between the two. Let me give you an example if I can. All right, let me go back to, uh, uh, let me talk about Larry King for a minute first. Um, I'm lucky, he's a friend, been on a show a couple times, got a book. Okay, dig your well before you're thirsty. Picked up the phone years ago, called Larry, and said, Larry, you know, might I be able to get on your show again? I just wrote a book, dig your well before you're thirsty. I think it's got merit. He said, are you gonna be in New York on Thursday? I lied. I said, yes. I said, I'll see you at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, where he always has dinner, 6.30, hang up the phone. Ironically, there is a newspaper right there, USA Today, I'd love it. King's got a column, 15 years. He met the champ, Muhammad Ali, at the Academy Awards. Here's verbatim what he said in that article. Biggest thrill of my life, couldn't sleep last night. Chills running up and down my spine. I immediately faxed that to the champ. I call him the champ, Muhammad. 88 acre estate, Berrien Springs, Michigan, FYI. They called back, why could I do that? I interviewed him for 10 hours. We became fast friends. They called back, hey, thanks very much, we live in the sticks, love the article. Hey, champ, Lonnie, his wife, I'll greet Larry for you. Having dinner with him Thursday night in New York City. They said, they're gonna be in New York City. Oh, please, I begged them, persistence. They said, okay, get there half hour early, six o'clock. Fine, six o'clock. Lonnie, Champ, myself, back to the door, in comes King, probably not looking forward to having dinner with me, sees the Champ, no exaggeration, bear hug left, bear hug right, kissing left cheek, right cheek, forehead, on the lips as I recall. And then he's got springs in his mouth, 45 minutes, Zaire, Thriller from Manila, Angelo Dundee, he loves boxing. 45 minutes into dinner, a very nice looking woman came up with a pen and paper in her hand, saw King, Champ, myself, Oh, Mr. McKay, I've read all of your books. Can I have your autograph? <laughs> King went nuts. Name was Marilyn. Signed a little note. She starts to walk away. King gets up and says, Ma'am, would you please come back here? She heard that. She comes back there. Don't you know who this is? It's Muhammad Ali. Don't you want his autograph? Looked at Larry and said, Larry, you bit it hook, line, and sinker. I paid her 50 bucks an hour ago to come and ask for my autograph, which I did. She was the catering manager, catering manager, Ritz Carlton Hotel. Got there a half hour early, set it up. Champ gives me five, give me Harvey. Boy, oh boy, this is really something. All right, but I got on the show again. Moral, don't be boring. <laughs> don't be predictable. All right, think, hardest, most valuable task any person performs. Next idea. All right, if Joe Polly said, Harvey, you got three minutes, that's it. Good luck, kid. All right, well, and here's the three minutes. Head and shoulders above the rest. People don't care how much you know about them once they realize how much you care about them. 
Now, we've invented a new product at McKay Envelope Company. It's 66 question customer profile we require all of our salespeople to fill out. You wouldn't believe how much we know about our customers. IRS wouldn't believe how much we know about our customers. Now, I'm not talking about their taste in envelopes either. We don't know based on routine conversation and observation what a customer is like as a human being, what he or she feels strongly about, what he's most proud of having achieved, any status symbols in his or her offices. In other words, we want to know what turns that customer client on. At a customer in New York City last week, just got home late last night. Now, before I went in there, there's no cold calls at our company for 50 years. No cold calls. We prepare to win. We do our homework. We make out the 66 as best as we can. We add to it as we call into those people. Here's what I knew about the buyer. That I wanted to sell him some envelopes, obviously. He graduated from Notre Dame, MBA, as I recall, from USC married his high school sweetheart, they have three children, she works for a pharmacy company, he loves the Cubs, loves to play golf, October 24th was his birthday, June 26th was our anniversary. What's the probability I will sell this customer over a long period of time? You're doggone right, it's almost 100%. If I don't know any of this going in, I'll read the desk, I'll read the walls, very, very important. Oprah Winfrey, I got a big break. Okay, five minutes on her program, five minutes. Prepared to win, 66, found out everything, did my homework, got on the program, mentioned four, five, six, seven things. I knew 25 before going in. She kept me on for one hour, one hour, trying to add value to her life. As you all know, which Joe talked about just 20 minutes ago. So really, truly important. Sold 50,000 hardcover books, 50,000. You can't know enough. Okay, in one week, can't know enough. All right, no possible way. Uh, enough about your customers, your clients, your competitors, your audiences, your suppliers, your employees. Example, Al, okay, gets a phone call. Al gets a phone call from Harold. Hey, come to the Rotary tomorrow. Al says, yeah, I'll be there. I got a problem. My guest speaker just canceled. Al says, hey, okay, uh, I might be able to fill in. Harold says, what might you talk about? I don't know, I'll talk about sex. Fine, next day, 45 minute speech, standing ovation. Al comes home, his wife says, hey, I, I don't understand, what, what'd you talk about? Now he's smart enough to know that his wife thinks he doesn't know anything about sex. So he says, skiing. Oh, she says, I see skiing. Next day, there's Harold's wife in the, in the supermarket. There's Al's wife, an aisle away. Harold's wife hollers out, hey, talk to my husband. Heard your husband gave a great speech at Rotary. He must be terrific. And she says, I don't understand. He's only done it once and his hat blew off. And in closing, always act like your mother is watching. I want to talk about ethics for a few minutes. There's been a consistent, gradual decline in the ethical business practices in the United States for the last 50 years. And it's reached new extremes lately. Virtually every institution that can be measured from congressmen to senators to state and local politicians to religious institutions to business leaders to people cheating in college to athletes, on and on and on. So here's an example of ethics if I can share with you. Mother was invited for dinner at her son Brian's apartment. During the course of the meal, Brian's mother couldn't help but notice how beautiful Brian's roommate Jennifer was. Brian's mom and lawn suspected a relationship between Brian and Jennifer. Over the course of the evening, while watching the two interact, she started to wonder if there was more between them than met the eye. Reading his mom's thoughts, Brian volunteered, I know what you must be thinking, but I assure you, Jennifer and I are just roommates. About a week later, Jennifer came to Brian saying, ever since your mother came to dinner, I've been unable to find that beautiful silver gravy ladle. You don't suppose she took it, do you? Well, I doubt it, Brian said, but I'll send her an email just to be sure. So I wrote, dear mom, I'm not saying that you did take the gravy ladle from the house, and I'm not saying that you did not take the gravy ladle. But the fact remains that one has been missing ever since you were here for dinner, love, Brian. Several days later, Brian received an email back from his mother. Dear son, I'm not saying that you do sleep with Jennifer? I'm not saying that you do not sleep with Jennifer, but the fact remains that if Jennifer had been sleeping in her own bed, she would have found the ladle by now. <laughs> McKay's moral, if you have integrity, nothing else matters. If you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. Been a marvelous audience, don't count the years, make the years count. Thank you very much.
Thanks for listening to this episode of Genius Network with Harvey McKay. If you'd like access to the full video presentation, the special resources, and show notes for this episode, please visit GeniusNetwork.com forward slash five zero. That's GeniusNetwork.com forward slash five zero. If you'd like to learn more about the Genius Network annual event, please visit GeniusNetworkEvents.com. That's GeniusNetworkEvents.com. 